Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video here on Watch Wildlife. Today I'm out here at Land Between the Lakes again. We're doing another wildlife photography vlog. I've got out here for the first time the Canon R5. Wonderful camera, loving it so far for the little bit that I have used it. And um, this vlog is going to be basically my initial thoughts on the R5. I'm going to be using it this whole week. Today's Monday, testing it out and giving you guys my initial thoughts on this camera, which like I said, so far has been really impressive, but I haven't gotten a chance to use it much. So we'll see. Um, but obviously all the reviews seem great and I'm super excited to test it out. And um, this vlog will not be a review per se. This will still be, you know, kind of vloggy and be more about the photos we're taking, but we'll also talk about the R5 a lot. And um, then later down the line, I want to do a really nice, you know, long in-depth review of the R5, just specifically going into the camera specs, into the image quality, all the different things about it. And uh, I want to do that when I get out to Yellowstone this summer. I think a really awesome video could be like an on location in Yellowstone National Park in spring, which is an awesome time to photograph there. Um, review of the Canon R5. I think that could be an awesome video. So I'm planning on saving the more detailed review for then. But for now, we're going to be just testing it out in this vlog out here at LBL. And I'll give you a little bit of my thoughts on it. And, um, you know, we'll see how it holds up to the ADD. Um, like I said, I'm loving it so far, but we'll see as we go here. I've actually just parked here. There's a pond out here with a lot of different, you know, waterfowl on it. Um, you know, some herons, egrets, all kinds of different things down there. Um, and basically just kind of, you know, slowly make my way towards it, make sure I'm not spooking any of the birds and uh, see what I can photograph. Without any further delay, let's get out here and test out the Canon R5. little pond now i don't know if you can tell but the insects are insane down here i'm literally swarmed with gnats uh, you probably can't even pick them up on this camera i don't know but they're everywhere and um are really just annoying there are a couple of different species of birds down here there are a bunch of wading birds herons and different things egrets and um there was a bald eagle over here as well so that was pretty cool um but i think i've gotten some pretty good photos and footage um nothing too spectacular but some decent stuff and i think the r5 Animal eye tracking has been working pretty well um, on these birds. Not perfect. Um, I think your views overhyped it a little bit. It's not quite as good as they said it was, but it still works pretty darn well. And um, I have been enjoying it. It's been a welcome addition. So yeah, I think that's about it for this shoot. Sun is starting to go down, almost down over there now. Um, so I've been shooting that bird over there for the last little bit. So that's about it for this shoot, guys. Um, I need to get out of these gnats. They're absolutely killing me right now. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. guys so i'm back out here at lbl now um i have just got out here we've got about two hours before sunset and um i'm just on the other side of the bridge um that crosses over to land between the lakes and there are a lot of different species of birds that i've been seeing out here on the bridge so i'm gonna get out here see what i can shoot never shot here before so i figured we'll give it a shot today no pun intended and um just just you know see what we can shoot out here uh, maybe do a little bit of video work too we'll see but let's get out here and get to shooting <music> Not onto the bridge, getting a little farther out here now, and uh, we may even cross over onto the other side and see what's over there as well. So I don't know where this will go, but um, we're going to hopefully find us a subject for the evening. And um, I plan on actually, you know, staying here and shooting that subject for the whole evening. 
throughout the entire life and hopefully coming away with some really, really good shots. Really putting the R5 to the test all the way into the dark later tonight. Like, as it's, you know, when the sun goes down and it's starting to really get dark in the evening, put the R5 to the test with a really high ISO and stuff like that and uh, see how it performs in low light. So, yeah, we'll see how it does. I'm excited to get it out here and uh, be photographing. And here are a couple of different birds flying over. So, I'm going to put down the camera and get to shoot. All right, guys, so I've been photographing a couple of smaller birds, um, some red winged blackbirds, and I'm currently photographing this Canada goose. And so far, the R5 has been awesome, um, and I haven't had any issues with EVF blackout until today. When I started shooting these red winged blackbirds, which are super fast, you know, small birds that really are all over the place fluttering around, um, I noticed blackout for sure was an issue with the uh, mechanical shutter. Switch to electronic is a little better, but it's still a little bit of an issue. So it's barely noticeable with the electronic shutter, but it definitely is still there. And especially with the mechanical, um, it's really more noticeable. And if you're shooting, if you're shooting fast moving birds, it could definitely become a problem. So if that's the case for you, I would just recommend switch to electronic. Yeah, you'll have more shots to go through, but you'll have more keepers and uh, you'll have more shots in general that, you know, could have a better wing gesture and everything like that. But the other thing that I wanted to note on really quick is that with the teleconverter on and the autofocus is a bit jumpy, I think the animal eye AF has a harder time finding the animal's eye when you have a teleconverter on. So I've got the 1.4 on right now and it's struggling a lot more to find the eye than when I was shooting without the teleconverter. So that is another problem that you may have, but um, you know, you still have, you're able to use all the entire screen, focus points across the entire screen with the 1.4 teleconverter on. And um, it's not by any means bad, but it's noticeably worse with the teleconverter on, the Animal Eye AF is. With normal autofocus, it's just as fast as without the teleconverter. It's perfect if you're just using, you know, normal, like we used on DSLRs with, you know, you move the autofocus point around and uh, AF point selection, focus recompose, all that. Um, if you're doing that, then, you know, it, I notice no reduction in focus speed or accuracy with the teleconverter. Um, but with Animal IAF, definitely uh, the IAF struggles a little bit more when you have a teleconverter on. Besides that, I'm loving the R5 and I'm going to continue to shoot here and see what I come away with. It has been a pretty darn good evening of photography out here. Mainly been photographing these red winged blackbirds um, that have been flying around. I think I've gotten some pretty decent photos of them. But I did just have a great blue heron fly over and it flew in front of these clouds over here. And I'm gonna sh give you a shot, show you a shot of these clouds. Insanely dramatic sky. I mean, like it was just a perfectly silhouetted great blue heron on this dramatic clouds with sun, with like the sun rays coming through the, the clouds where, you know, just covering the sun enough to create those sun rays. It was perfect, looked amazing. Got some awesome shots of that as well. Um, so I think today was very successful with with the R5 out here. And uh, like I said, with the 1.4 TC, it's definitely struggling a little bit to focus. There's been a couple of times these blackbirds have taken off and it's not quite captured focus as they came off the perch and flew. Um, whereas without the tail converter, it probably would have done a lot better and would have kept focus the whole time that you know the bird was in flight as opposed to missing a few shots when it first took off of the perch. So it's been a little bit unfortunate, um, but you know, that's just what comes with a teleconverter. And I was using the Animal IAF when the birds took off of the perch, should have mentioned that, but yeah, so it's still game changing. I still love the IAF and it still has gotten me way more shots than I would have gotten without it. But with the teleconverter, it struggled a little bit. There are probably some settings I could tweak to, you know, maybe reduce the number of shots I'm missing with the teleconverter. Honestly, I don't even know if that would help too much. I really just think that it's a matter of the animal eye autofocus just really is struggling when I have the teleconverter on. So um, anyways, I've gotten some awesome photos out here this evening. I think this has been the best evening that I've had with the R5 so far. Probably my best evening out here at LBL, honestly. Those heron shots against the sky, I think we're gonna, they're, they're gonna be phenomenal, I think. So that was awesome. And I'm gonna shoot a little bit more here this evening um, and then we'll be done for tonight and I'll be back out. Uh, I don't think I can come out tomorrow, but Friday I'll be back out to photograph again to close out the vlog. So before we move on to Friday, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and roll all the shots that I got this evening right now and um, then I'll see you guys again Friday morning.
All right, y'all, I am out here at the Elk and Bison Prairie, and um, I'm kind of just cruising real slow through here, um, watching for Elk and Bison, and uh, that's what we're hoping to photograph today uh, to close out this vlog. It's now Friday. Um, I wanted to go out and shoot a little more this week and have more content for this vlog, but, you know, I'm getting close to finals and all that, so it's just, I've been really busy with school stuff. But anyways, we're still out here today to close out this vlog. Hopefully going to photograph some elk and bison out here. Um, and, you know, come away with some great shots and hopefully some good video too. I want to test out the 4K 120 on the R5. I haven't used that yet and try to get some really nice, smooth slow-mo. So I want to try that in this vlog too. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that turns out. And I will update you guys when we find some wildlife to shoot. I've got a herd of elk right here and uh, the bison are out in full force, as you can see down there. All right guys, so I'm now parked here on a couple of elk and I've been shooting out the window. So you can see them right there. And this is really the first photographable situation that I found. Um, we got really close to bison and some elk earlier, but there was just no way to really um, get a, any good photos of them. They're all either below you or um, in a location where you couldn't get out of the car and you know try to get down low and shoot from there. Um, so this is the first time that I'm actually getting to shoot. Um, but R5 Animal IAF is still not perfect, but working very, very well. And um, I looked at the images of the uh, birds from the other day, and even with the high ISO that I had to shoot at, because I was shooting at a fast shutter speed and heavily cropped, they're phenomenal photos. I mean, they're, they're not necessarily something you could blow up on a massive print, but all things considered, I'm really impressed by the quality of the photos and the low light noise handling out of this camera. Um, so it's been awesome. I'm going to shoot a little more and um, then probably shoot a little bit of the 4K120 video as well. And then we'll wrap this vlog up. DSLRs video wise it just struggled with you just couldn't really create good videos of wildlife on a lot of DSLRs even when you had 4k capabilities because of the autofocus just struggled to keep up on the eye but in a lot of cases with this that IAF is nailing it and, and keeping right on locking focus for you no trouble um, there are some situations especially when you know they're moving in and out of grass and stuff and behind different things that it'll lose focus some but it's rare and it's really good for video. I actually think that 
and maybe this is just because in the video mode I'm only using IAF and not using spot focus, you know, um, but I actually think that it may be better for video than it is for photos. It seems like it, but, you know, that's probably just me. Um, I don't know why it would be that way, but anyways, it's awesome. I love it for video. I love it for photos, and that's kind of been the theme throughout this vlog. It's just been, you know, how has the Canon R5 performed as I've been testing it out for the first time this week because I've never used it before this week, and um, it's performed really, really well. I've been very impressed by it, and um, I really love this camera. You know, for wildlife with the high megapixel count that allows you to really crop in, with the high ISO noise capabilities and low light capabilities for um, both autofocus and for like ISOs and noise, it's great. Um, you know, one thing that my ADD struggled at was in low light, not only because of noise, but because it also struggled to achieve focus when it got darker out. This camera does not struggle at all when it gets darker out. And um, as far as, you know, the Anima AF, like I said, it was definitely overhyped and oversold, but it's still really great um, and very helpful. And just all around, I love it. The, the R5 has been awesome. Um, so that's my initial thoughts on it. In this vlog, I do plan on doing a more, you know, kind of in-depth, detailed, and organized review of the R5 when I get out to Yellowstone this summer, when I've learned a little bit more about the R5 as a camera and about the settings and the capabilities. And um, I think that that could be an awesome video. So you have that to look forward to coming up on the channel. And speaking of the trip to Yellowstone this summer, we're almost there, guys. This is actually the second to last vlog before we go out to Yellowstone because... Um, next week I'm going to have a vlog, um, and then the week after that I have finals, um, so I'll be very busy with that, won't be doing a vlog, and then the week after that I head out to Yellowstone. So we are like three weeks from, literally three weeks from when you guys are watching this, I will be in Grand Teton National Park and um, will be about to head out to Yellowstone to check into my job the next morning, three weeks from the time that this video comes out. So we're getting there guys, it's almost time for an awesome summer in Yellowstone, absolutely cannot wait to get out there so that's going to be a phenomenal trip and i'm um, going to be able to produce some awesome photos videos and vlogs and everything out there so um stay tuned for that guys and subscribe so that you don't miss any of that and uh, most importantly as always also subscribe so that you can be entered for that 1000 subscriber manatee swim giveaway when that comes around also if you enjoyed this video guys please comment down below let me know what you all thought and drop a like that really helps and um comment if you have the r5 or if you don't comment and let me know what you think of what it's been able to produce in this video um and what you, your experience with the camera is if you have it i uh, think that it's been phenomenal and i'd love to hear your guys' thoughts so so uh, with that, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Hopefully sometime I will uh, actually get this filmed if we could maybe get a break in the cars. <laughs>